We could be anywhere. We pop up all over the place. Happen to be at York City at the moment. But the other day we visited Sheffield Wednesday's training ground at Middlewood Road and spoke then to the club's development coach with his view on referees and officiating, Lee Bollen. Lee, can we go back more years than you might care to uh, remember to when you started your career? Yep. Can you bring to mind what referees were characteristically like then and how much they might have changed as a breed over the years? I think referees back in the day I started um, were certainly a lot more approachable uh, in general. There's still some nowadays that, are, uh, that you can still speak to in the park, but a lot of them are dictated by rules and regulations. Um, so it's a lot more difficult to strike up any real rapport. Um, I think there's a lot less common sense used nowadays. I think it's all done in black and white, but when I first started, you could quite comfortably go through 90 minutes with a bit of banter with the referee, giving a bit of stick, taking a bit of stick back, there was never anything personal in it. Um, I think football's an emotional game, but I don't think it's not emotional for referees as well. And yeah, players will get upset at some decisions, whether they're, they're in the right or wrong. But I think referees, when I first started, most certainly had a real knack of uh, dealing with the stick that came their way from players. And that knack, was it giving some stick back? Absolutely. A lot of the referees when, when I started were potentially school teachers or business owners or proper people person um, and knew how to handle the, the childish side of professional footballers. As I, as I said earlier, it's, a, it's an emotional game. Uh, you're desperate to win all the time. There's times where you get carried away and you'll go into a, a challenge a little bit too hard. Um, and still feel that there's nothing wrong with it. There will be times where other people challenge you a little bit too hard and you feel hard done by. Um, but I, I do genuinely believe that referees in the past were a little bit more lenient in the way that they dealt with things rather than being dictated to from a... It's almost refereeing by numbers nowadays, which is a shame because I think a lot of the referees would prefer it to go back to the, the previous way. Well, you felt the referees didn't take personal offence from a no. that you made, no. and you've had referees criticise oh, your yeah, performance, yeah, 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 yeah. your own performance for instance. What no, I mean, listen, I've played reserve games um, back in the past. I remember once playing for Wednesday up at Leeds United. Um, we were winning the game 3-1, but I was getting frustrated. There was a young lad playing for Leeds United, I can't remember his name, and being an older pro, he just never left me alone. He kept kicking me, tapping me, putting me... And I've eventually turned around to the referee and said, Ref, you're having an absolute shocker. Pick up on this. He says, I'm not the one playing reserve football with. So that was it, down in a nutshell. And it sort of it puts you on the back foot from there on. And he said it with a wink and a smile and moved on. And it, it sort of it, it decreased any of the issue that was going on in my head suddenly. And, it, it, you know, it was one of the, it took me back. And then I thought about it and I thought, you know what? Quick as attack, just come straight back, sharp as attack. And... Um, it, it, it diffused the situation straight away. Just little bits and pieces that would give you a bit of stick. And yet you feel the referees are unable to, to, to do that and make that kind of remark. Now, yeah. In the Premier League, they've been known to be reported somewhat childishly, in my view, yeah. for little asides that they've allegedly made. Well, yeah, I mean, I've not had any major issue from that point of view. There was, there was one referee up in Scotland that I felt he was a, a school teacher uh, in my latter years when I was starting my coaching side of things. and. He was so frustrating, you couldn't speak to him. You know, you wanted to speak to him about a certain incident, you know, don't speak to me, you're not allowed to speak to me, all this type of thing, and you're just thinking, look, where's the common sense? Where's the, uh, the to and fro, the building of a conversation and uh, trying to understand his point of view on something as much as trying to put my point of view over? And it frustrates you even more and makes you even more angry. And I think it just builds up a little bit of resentment between the playing side and the refereeing side, and it doesn't need to be that way. Should there be more communication? I would, no, 100%. It would be great if referees came in uh, to clubs on a day-to-day -day basis and refereed the five-a-sides going on uh, in a training game. Get to know the characters of each team. Get to know that if Jose Semedo goes down and crumpled in a challenge on the football pitch on a Saturday, that 99 times out of 100, that means he's been fouled. He's not gone down for the sake of it because he's not that type of character. If, you, if a referee came in and 
did our five asides, six asides, eight asides in training every day, they would know he's not that type of character. So they'd be able to build up a, a, a much more, a much better database of the type of player that are going to be refereeing on a Saturday in a, in a, in a crucial relegation battle or a crucial promotion battle. Interesting idea. I think there's a lot of support for that. Also, maybe a, an educational element for players as well. Yeah, I, I hope that referees don't think that they're past learning. I think every game of football should be, I, I see it, every training session I see as a learning curve for me. Yeah, relatively young in the coaching side of things, but every game of football, I could go and watch a, a pub team train on a Sunday, look at a drill they're doing and pick it up and think, well, you know what, I would use that. I'd maybe tweak it this way, tweak it that. I hope referees um, continually see their games as, a, as an education, a way to learn, whether it be about individual players, whether it be a specific uh, way a, management, uh, a manager deals with these players. Uh, whether it be um, the feeling around certain grounds. I mean, majority of them are experienced enough to know that um, the atmosphere at a mill wall is going to be slightly different than an atmosphere down at Yeovil or something like that. So there's so many factors uh, built into professional football at the moment, whether it be individual players, individual coaches, individual managers, crowds, mentality, uh, surroundings, that it's an ongoing education, I'm sure. From your contact with individual referees, do you detect that they're uneasy about not being able to comment, not being able to say things, would like to be more open? Is that the case? Is it, or is it that they're not allowed to be more open? Which, which of the two? I think um, a lot of the way um, player-referee interaction has gone has been dictated uh, from up on high, whether that be FIFA or UEFA. Um, as I say, the, the, the common sense side of the game has been diluted a lot. Um, and I think that referees are dictated to rather than being able to do it maybe the, the way they would want. There are some, some referees that will have a bit of banter, but others, probably more precisely, the, the, the newer ones coming into the ranks are just being brought up on this mentality that it's black and white. There's no grey areas, whereas some of the guys that when I say grey areas, that was the banter. Yeah. There is a dilemma here, isn't there, in that the game as a whole is trying to root mm. out abuse. Mm. Uh, and there's a respect campaign that has been going for some Absolutely. years. So youngsters are being encouraged not to criticise the referee mm -hmm. in any way, not to say anything to yeah. him. Yeah. Um, so you have that on one hand, mm -hmm. trying to reduce dissent, and on the other you have this trying to get back to perhaps a little bit more mutual respect between yeah. Players and so it's difficult. No, I agree. And the respect campaign is a positive thing, but it has to be two way as well. The referee has to show a bit of respect to managers and players at times when they're trying to ask a question rather than just my way or the highway type of attitude. So the respect has to be two way. Um, is I'm hoping it's, it, it is going to sort of take a step backwards. I hope people understand that. Um, there's a fantastic respect and a lot of people compare the rugby side of things to the football side of things and, and uh, rightly so. The respect is, from what I've seen on television, I've never played the game at a professional level of rugby, but there seems to be a lot more respect for the referee at rugby than there is in the football side of things. It's the toughest game in the world, it's so fast nowadays in comparison to making split second decisions. We sit at home and see the same incident three, four times in the space of ten seconds where the referee's got it like that, has to make the decision. Hey, he's going to make mistakes. We've got to accept that. I stand at the side of the park, look at an incident and think that's a stonewall penalty for us. Why is the referee not giving it? Get angry, get upset, get disappointed. We end up losing the game. Come in, look at it on the video and think, oh, referee got it right. So there, there's that side of things and I think a little bit more communication from all sides, FA, coaches, players, referees, can only benefit. It's all the same game, isn't it? It's all the same game. As Sheffield Wednesday's development coach, you're now dealing with kids, young players in their formative years, what, what kind of things do you tell them about where refereeing is concerned? Listen, the first and foremost, I don't want players getting silly bookings for the sake of it, because further down the line that affects the players individually. Nine times out of ten at my level, they've probably got one year contracts, so every year is so important to them, well to be fair, every seven or eight months, because come February time, it's almost decision time, and they've still got three months of contract left. So, one, you don't want any silly... Uh, uh, bookings or suspensions is going to put you out of the team, which could affect your future professional status. Um, 
Secondly, yeah, you try and drill it in, but I'm as emotional as a player sometimes. Uh, I'll hold my hands up, I get it wrong sometimes uh, with regards to decisions, and um, I want to win every game I play. Although I'm not kicking the ball, but you, you, I think it's important you lead by example, but there are going to be times where you fall down. Every manager does it. I mean, obviously, the most high-profile ones, Alan Pardew, this year, and I think that just proves the emotion that gets involved in the game. He, he, he's a winner, he was going through a frustrating time and he's done something that he, he obviously really, really regrets. That happens at all levels of football, whether you're an under-10 coach or whether you're a first-team coach in the Premier League. Frustration sometimes gets the better of you, but, as I say, in general, you're, you're supposed to, uh, I would say, do as I say, not as I do. Well, I just wonder, you know, whether managers and coaches should go back to the future, as it were, and go back into the director's box and get a better view of the game, for a start, mm. and secondly, stay clear of that emotional pitfall that's always waiting. Well, again, it's almost a, a thing from rugby as well. The coaches, they sit up on high, up in the glass, and pass down information down. Um, I think quite a few managers do it. Walter Smith started to do that at the end of his career. Very often sit up in the director's box, especially for first half. Steve McLaren's doing it now. Nigel Pearson, Nigel Pearson another one. Um, I don't know if Nigel's new operations had anything to do with that at the time, and then he went on a good run of form, so continue what's right. I mean, if, if you start losing games, would he have changed his uh, uh, routine? Would he have been down on it? Hey. As long as you're winning, whatever you do is right. So when you're losing, you have to look at other things and look at ways of changing it. We can still. And Derby have gone on a great run. Steve sat up there and done great. Uh, Nigel's done the exact same thing. So what's right, what's wrong? As long as you're winning, it's always right. Final question then, Liam. It's becoming an old chestnut. Technology, more technology. We've got the goal line uh, situation sorted out. Should there be more of it? Should we extend it? Um, no. No, I think there has to be a human element to it. I think goal line technology is, is oh, it's so, so important. Really important. But I think it has to be extended to, uh, and down to our league as well. We played Charlton in the FA Cup, which was a big game, potentially for future uh, rounds. There was an incident where we felt we had scored, they felt we hadn't scored, it's still in debate. I mean, it was very close. I'd probably hedge on the side that it maybe didn't cross the line, but the referee in that game was a, profe uh, was a Premiership referee. As the incident happened, the first thing he did was look at his watch to see, because that's their sensor in the Premier League, to see if it had crossed the line. Totally forgot he's playing at a championship club. Now, how can he use it? That, that's where it falls down, in my opinion. You either roll it out and the FA cover it, or you don't cover it. Because if that had been a goal, we miss out on a lucrative uh, next round tie against our local rivals and potentially further down the cup. As, as I say, I've seen the incident, maybe it didn't cross the line, so maybe the referee got it right. But the fact that his initial reaction was to look at his watch to see if it uh, beeped or said goal, he's at a championship club. We've not got that technology. So that's the debate. That's the debate. But it's all finances. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you.